Hawk fans, another St. Joseph's men's basketball season on the horizon. The return of four starters for Phil Martelli and company, but a lot of potential for this freshman class. The likes of Lamar Kimball, Chris Clover, Pierre Francesco Oliva, and Markel Lodge. We sat down with each of them for our Meet the Freshman segment. Let's see what they had to say. Lamar Kimball, for our purposes, listed on the roster that way, but uh, nickname for uh, probably about as long as you can remember, Fresh. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, where'd that come from? How'd that start? Um, it was just a childhood nickname. You know, my dad had it, actually, so it kind of got passed down to me. You know, it was, was kind of a two-part name, Manny Fresh, but, you know, Fresh stuck with basketball. You know, Manny is kind of my neighborhood name now. You know, too many people really don't call me Lamar, so it's just it's kind of a funny story. In terms of uh, the, the term, though, fresh, does it have anything to do with, with clothing, the, the way you dress? Um, I mean, sort of, yeah. It kind of went with it, but it was just, you know, it was just a, it was just a nickname, you know. But it's, growing up, it kind of went along with different stuff, you know, fresh on the basketball court or, you know, fresh in clothing. So it was just like, this is a funny story growing up. Now, I heard you have uh, a lot of pairs of sneakers. About, about <laughs> yeah. how many pairs? Um, I say too many. I I can't too really count. Too many. So many that I like when people ask me for sneakers, I just I just give them away. But like, I don't even like charge. You know, you know a, lot, a lot of people say if you want a pair of sneakers, you can like charge somebody. But no, I mean, I go to the park some days. People ask can I have them. I just take them off my feet and be like, I don't even have these. So. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the kind of, kind of person I am. So you're right almost now. like a good Samaritan with your shoes. Yeah, 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 definitely, you know, especially ones that I don't wear too much, you know. I always try to give, you know, kids some or, you know, younger basketball players that are in high school, try to get them sneaks, things like that. Playing college basketball in Philadelphia, you know, getting to play high school ball here, mm -hmm. when did you feel like that was a reality, that, that you were going to come to Hawk Hill? Um, you know, definitely when, you know, Phil Martelli, he came to my school, you know, offered me, you know, face to face. And, you know, that, that kind of let me know that, you know, somebody kind of care about you and really want you there at their school. So, you know, coming here on the unofficial, you know, everything was comfortable. You know, I already knew, you know, a couple of players who went here. So it was just, it was just a perfect fit for me, you know, to come here and everybody's family like. Who did you know um, beforehand? I mean, I definitely knew Ja, you know, Ja Williams, because he went to PET. You know, just another Philly guy. I already knew of, you know, guys like Shavar, DeAndre, things like that, because they were locally, you know, AAU-wise. So, you know, everything was just, you know, it just, it just felt comfortable, you know, coming here and knowing that, you know, it was a good environment, those are good people. First impression of Phil Martelli, what'd you think? <laughs> First impression, I mean, I knew that he was like father-like. Just the way he talked to you was, was father-like. You know, he's just a father figure. I knew there was somebody that you can, you know, possibly trust with your life, you know? He just, the way, it was it was nothing that he didn't come on to, you know, strong or, you know, bang you here and there. He just basically came on you too, like, I, I'm going to, you know, be here for you every step of the way. You know, your parents need anything, you know, I'll be here. Anything happen, I'll be here. You know, family's first. And, you know, so that kind of, you know, made it easier, even just making your decision to come here. You win uh, a couple of state titles at, mm -hmm. at Newman Goretti under uh, a guy who's legendary in this area and Carl, Carl uh, Aragale. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to compare the two uh, a little bit. Compare and contrast Phil and, uh, and Coach Aragale. How, uh, uh, <laughs> how are they similar? How are they different? Uh, similarities, you know, I see both in practice. They're kind of, you know, sit back, but, you know, like let you, let you play, let you think, but they'll correct you. You know, they're not really screaming type coaches who just every little mistake is just, you know, one of, them, one of them type coaches you just get on you real loud, make you feel some type of way. You know, they want you to get comfortable with it, make mistakes, but they're going to correct you in a nice way. You know, um, I mean, differences, I, it's, there's not too many differences, you know. I would say, you know, I say the differences is between college and high school. You know, high school, you can more have a free-flowing play, you know, because especially if you, you know, have a talented team over somebody, you know, it was just free flow, but college is not too many times like that. So it was more structure, more, you know, you really have to, you know, be on top, be on cue of everything. So I say that's kind of the difference. It's just college basketball and high school basketball just in general is just different. What's been the biggest adjustment for you in terms um, of transitioning to next moving a level up? I would definitely say speed of the game, but 
knowing how to slow yourself down in the speed of the game. You know, a lot of times you have to pick up with the speed, but then you just start going too fast. You never get a chance to actually say, ooh, let me stop and, you know, wonder what, what am I doing? What am I going to do next? So, you know, catching the ball and actually, you know, figuring out what I'm going to do at the speed of the game, you know, that's kind of was the biggest adjustment. Or uh, a lot of the good ones, they say, uh, eventually it slows down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Think about day one when you got here on campus, you start to, to run pickup a little bit and go through workouts. Yeah. Does it slow down a little bit? Oh, since then, yes, definitely has slowed down. <laughs> I hope <laughs> so, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it definitely has slowed down. You know, I remember, I remember first day, you know, um, just talking. I was like, I just, in my head, just saying, I'm moving too fast out there, you know, trying to keep up with all the guys, you know. Just, I'll have an open shot and I'm moving so fast, I'll just pass it. Cause I'm, but, you know, now I'm kind of, you know, more under control, seeing the game more at a faster rate, things like that. So, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely been an adjustment, though, so far. First thing for you that came to mind when you saw DeAndre Bembry play for the first time? Uh, who this guy running with the fro? <laughs> <laughs> I would say that, you know, you see him running and you see the fro flapping a little bit. You're just like, but then he was scoring. So you're just like, oh, man, like he's good. Kind of looks like Dr. J. Like, yeah, yeah. With the old, the old uh, ABA that, That's definitely the first first impression. Like you think he's, you know, back then in the 70s playing or something. Like it's definitely, but, you know, he's a great person. Definitely, you know, a great person on the court too, you know. So, I mean, that's a good guy, though. He's a good guy. What have you learned from him? Um, I've seen his work, his work ethic, you know, the way he approaches everything. You know, he could be dead tired, but he's still going, he's still going to fight and he's never going to show anybody, you know, that he has a, you know, a weakness and being tired and fatigued right now. So I've definitely seen that, you know, and little tricks of trade that I've picked up, you know, from the things like that, just watching him. So, Chris Clover, when, <laughs> uh, when did you two first meet? Um, I mean, we met, you know, all four years in the Catholic League, you know, playing each other. But yeah, it's just, it was just a funny story because, you know, we, we played up in, a, um, you know, in the All-Star game. This was before, you know, we even thought about this. And I was just playing around because I knew that St. Jules was at the top of his list, was at the top of mine. And I was just asking, like, um, what's, what's up with St. Jules, man? Like, when you when you commit in there, so I commit. You know, it was it was funny, though. It was, we was just joking, but you know, it actually happened, so... I mean, it's, it's kind of it's kind of cool though. Playing uh, in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. what's that mean? What's the, what's it mean to to be able to to stick around in a place where you know you've called home for for a good amount of time? It mean a lot. It mean a lot. I mean, it it, it brings pressure, you know, coming with a lot of pressure. But you know, I, I'm sure I can handle it. You a know, lot of family coming to yeah, the arena. Yeah, I bet. a lot of family. Yeah, so a lot of people ask for tickets, things like that. But <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, it, it comes with its benefits, you know, um, being in Philadelphia, you know, playing in front of your family, getting to see them more often, things like that. And um, it's just it's a great thing, you know, as everybody who has came from Philadelphia, you know, has made it and definitely changed everything, especially being the big five league, you know, playing at the Palestra, how many great games have, you know, passed by there. So it's Did you go as a kid? Palestra? No, I, I never really went. You but I went? Yeah, I started to learn more about the history as – you know, I've been to high school, you know, you know, Catholic League Championship was in the Palestra, you know, things like that. So I started to learn more about it, you know, just about how how the Big Five was in general, you know, for years. So, As for your year coming up, mm -hmm. just your, your collegiate career, your, your basketball bucket list, if you will, right. what's, uh, what's on your list of goals for the next four years? Um, that's that's, that's kind of hard, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, definitely. Make you think a little bit. Definitely have a good, you know, win percentage. One of the top, you know, win percentage. You know, I'm a person that don't like to lose too much, so you know, try to win as much as possible. Um, you know, in terms of individual goals, you know, everybody would like to be, you know, a ten freshman of the year, things like that, first team, a ten. You know, but you know, sometimes it go that way, sometimes it don't. But you know, I definitely would, you know, strive for that. But that comes with winning. So my main thing is, you know, winning first, and then you know. All the other, you know, um, accomplishments will come with it. Have you uh, thought about that first game at all? How, um, how much do you think about that when you you get home from <laughs> class or you you have a friend? I know you guys don't have a ton of free time in yeah. between class and practice, but uh, how much do you think about stuff like that? I mean, I, I think about it a lot. You know, just basically, we were just talking about this. You know, all the freshmen here, me, um, Pierre, Francesco, and Chris, we was just, you know, thinking that, you know, like 
you usually in high school be like, I can't wait till college basketball come on. But now it's like we're playing in it. It's like it's just it's funny how things change, you know. So, you know, we we've been thinking about that first day for a long time. The first the first, you know, time coming back in about August, coming back to school, we was talking, I can't wait till the first game. Like, man, that's so far away though. How we waiting, like you got it's a long wait, but you know, I can't wait. It, it's coming soon though. It's almost like uh, you know, you never know what it's like to own a cow until you buy a cow. Right, now, right. Now you guys are you Yeah, know, yeah, now you guys are part of it. Right, now we're here and it's just I mean, but it's gonna be a fun experience though, you know. This we this we bought this we all strive for, so hopefully we made the best out of it. Best friend on the team. Who uh, who best do you spend friend. the most time with? I mean definitely the freshmen. You know, Chris and Pierre Francesco, because, you know, y'all freshmen, I'm with them all day, you know, same dorm and everything. But, um, I mean, I'm kind of cool, you know, cool with everybody on the team. Everybody has good vibes here. Everybody is, you know, family. Like, we all like brothers. We have good chemistry already, you know, and that's kind of, like, funny, you know, kind of usually take time where, you know, people have egos here and there, but it's, it's none of that on the team. It's all, you know, love in that locker room. We just being there joking, you know, having fun. So that's good to see. Appreciate you stopping by. Welcome to Hawk Hill. All right. Happy to Thank have you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.